Might be wondering what's going on here. Well, after I did the stream, I went to go do what I usually do, which is grab a bite to eat. And I thought, you know, it's Friday. I could do any number of things. I could do a game stream. I could just play video games not on stream. I could do anything I wanted. But then I saw that a, a former, I don't know if I said co-host, that's debatable, but basically someone that I formerly associated with, someone that hang around the stream, someone that was very present on this channel, along with another person, an associate of hers. I don't know if they're yet friends, but you know, we'll just say an associate of hers who was also on the stream and actually was a co-host of the stream. Both of them were up to no good, running a, a doxing campaign against somebody three months ago while they were on this channel. You know, the channel that exposed Keemstar and Zoom and a, a few members in the NCO for sitting in a call and trying to gather the docs of just Destiny, one of the most famous live streams on this channel. Not the most viewed, but definitely the most impactful and memorable streams. It's a stream titled Welcome to Docs World, where we had Keemstar and Zoom and Diorio on to debate a case involving a large YouTuber, a well-known doxer, swatter, harasser, you name it, he does it, as well as a bunch of reliable, trustworthy YouTubers. All a call to sort of gather the personal information of a YouTuber because they thought, well, he might be a pedo. Now, apparently, a month after these streams took place, a member of the a regular attender of these streams, Charm Skull, was actually involved in her own uh, doxing uh, charade herself. Her and Leslie were uh, apparently teaming together to find the information of a 100 follower Twitter account named Commentary Watchdog, a joke account that sole existence was to piss people off. Well, apparently it pissed them off just a little too much, and they decided to sort of take matters in their own hands and uh, try to find whoever owned this account a phone number. Why? I don't know. These girls, and I say girls instead of women because mentally they are about the age of a, of a teenage girl. These girls are unstable and dangerous to say the least. Whether it's militian, whether whatever, uh, you know, motivation they might have doesn't negate the fact that they are painfully stupid and dangerous. And that's and that, that's a real, th I'm not even being dramatic here. I'm not even, you know, hyping this up for some sort of drama. They are, without a doubt, very dangerous if uh, what they're doing, um, you know, is a pattern of events. I mean, we have Scully now on two separate occasions looking for doxes, posting doxes, looking for people's phone number, posting people's faces. Now, before I show you what the both of these instances are where Scully either looked for a dox or published a dox, let's start with the story. So I think this is around the end of May. So essentially what happened was uh, Scully was getting ready to leave the, uh, the show. She had found a job. She just couldn't do the show anymore. Anymore, so she left and on the time that she left she basically decided that she was going to get a friend of hers to be the new replacement co-host without my decision right basically i hopped into one of her twitch streams and she was like hey i got this friend named leslie who can take my place during your streams now i had intended for it to just go back to how it was supposed to be in the first place which was just me and Boblox. she had other plans and to be honest with you you know it wasn't part of my planning but i was like all right whatever i really don't care if she's a good co-host whatever she's a good co-host i can roll with whatever i can i'm flexible i'm not picky with who who I stream with or whatever. I can talk to stream with it, literally anyone. So I, I didn't really care. So Scully left the show because she had her own job. And about a week into the job, she found someone on Twitch, or rather someone found her on Twitch and that person was named Taffer. Now uh, her and Taffer began to kind of hit it off a little. And if that sounds strange, that's because it is. Because, I mean, we're talking about a guy that found her on Twitch, started watching her streams, and in a week, all of a sudden, they were in an e-relationship. They started e-dating, basically, which I found very strange. Not that I have an issue with it. You can do whatever you want. You can make whatever weird decision you want to make. I, I really don't care. Behind the scenes, I did find that a little weird. I found that, you know, just a, a questionable uh, decision because she had an IRL boyfriend, whatever. Maybe things weren't working right. Who knows? She cut it off with him, and she starts going after this guy on Twitch. Turns out this guy is supposedly an emotional abuser and he had complete and total power to tell her to do whatever he wanted. So he decided, hey, you need to cut off all your friends on the internet because supposedly he was jealous of all the guys she was talking to online. You know, some of those guys were underage at the time. I'm not implying anything there. Don't don't get the wrong idea, but I'm just saying. I'm just, I don't know why he would be jealous of people she was talking to online of, you know, everyone, maybe certain people he was jealous with, but I don't know why he everyone. But the long story short of it was she told or sorry, Taffer told Scully, you need to defriend everyone you met on the internet. You need to disassociate yourself with everyone. You need to basically leave the internet and I guess spend time with me. 
whatever. That's what she, uh, that's what he told him, basically. Or, that's what he told her, basically. And she did that. She decided that she was going to cut off complete ties with all her friends. Now, I didn't consider me and Scully, like, a friend. I didn't consider us, like, a friendship at all. I mean, we talked a lot, but mostly on the show. Outside of the show, I mean, we talked, we were in calls and stuff, but we were never in calls, like, one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. The only time I was in a call with Scully that wasn't part of the show was just, like, in group calls or whatever, where I just hop in, say whatever. I didn't really care. So, I didn't consider Scully, like, a friend of mine. But she was definitely friends with people like Vexium Swift and Crimson Studios, people like that. And uh, from what I could tell, she had a somewhat close relationship with uh, those people. Now, I'm not throwing them, those names out there. I mean, uh, if anything, I'm kind of sympathizing with them basically by saying she was good friends with these people and she decided at a moment's notice she was going to cut everyone off. She was going to disassociate with everyone. And when she uh, decided to do that, everyone uh, began to clown on her and rightly so because she decided she was going to cut off everyone she met online for no reason other than some guy that I met on Twitch that I decided to hook up with told me to which is a ridiculous reason so obviously we all clowned her because that's a stupid dumb thing to do and a pretty big asshole thing to do if i'm being honest with you you should just cut everyone off you know because someone else told you to like what kind of reason is that so i made fun of her i said uh quite blatantly on twitter i pointed out the weird things she was doing i pointed out that i thought what she was doing was out of her mind hooking up with some guy you met on twitch that's ridiculous if you have a kid think about your kid i mean she was talking about moving to england where this guy lives she's in uh well i'm not gonna say the state but she's in the united states i think that's well established and I, she's public about the state she lives in i won't say it. you don't need to know she's in the united states this guy's in england and she was talking about going all the way to england to meet up with this guy bring her kid to england with him she wanted either for him to move to america or for her to move to england and she was kind of implying that she was going to go to england which is ridiculous i mean we're talking about someone you met like a few weeks ago someone you haven't you met on twitch you talked to on discord now i don't care what ideas you have about e-dating it's just i i fail to see how it's possible to sort of have this strong uh relationship with someone you've met on a gaming website you talk to on discord every night for three weeks somehow you have this such a strong connection you're willing to move across the world with your kid to see him but that's besides the point so they do their thing for a month she leaves the internet for a month she deletes her twitter account and uh, we cloned on her for a month straight not not like a full month but on offhand maybe every now and again i'd make a scully joke or whatever just to make fun of her for ditching all her friends after chasing twitch dick basically that's the extent of it so fast forward a month after she hooks up with this guy she decides that she's done with him she dumps him and she's back to the single life and uh back to streaming on twitch and going on twitter and you know she thinks she's going to be accepted by the rest of the internet Internet. Now, I don't think like a majority of people cared about the drama with her and us, for example. When she came back to Twitter, she was dealt with a lot of criticism, but it wasn't like a it wasn't like a lot or, or like an overwhelming amount. When she came back, she decided to fire up a live stream on YouTube. And on that live stream on YouTube, she uh, decided to it was about like an hour long live stream. She decided to talk a lot of shit about me, which is fair because I've talked shit about her. Why can't she do it to me? Granted, I don't think she's in the same position to be talking shit about me when she ditched all her friends for a guy on Twitch. But I mean, what? Look, I, I made jokes about her. She can make her jokes about me. I don't really care. But what I do care about is something she decided to do about 10 minutes before closing the stream. Now, I'm going to open up chat right now, and I want you guys to see, I, I, I want you guys to take a guess at what big brain action she decided to do on her YouTube stream. I, it looks like a lot of you people got it. Now, Derpy Soup in the chat saying, did she dox you? Nope. Let me put it this way. It's not that hard to dox me. So if that were to happen, that would suck, but it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. Rather, she decided to dox her ex-boyfriend. I say boyfriend in like commas because, you know, it's e-dating and it's on Twitch. I don't really count that as real. Supposed boyfriend. She decided to dox his face. Now, this guy was not a public figure. This guy was not a streamer. He didn't show his face. He, he wasn't public about what he looked like. But for some reason, out of revenge, she decided she was going to show everything. Uh, maybe, but I'm just gonna do something really fucked for just a second and probably make, uh, if my ex actually ever does see the stream, make him absolutely fucking hate me. Now, Pay attention to that. I'm going to do something fucked that will make my ex hate me. What she's admitting to here is an act of malicia. Now, pay attention to that, and let's see what she's about to do. What are you going to do? I'm turning off my webcam so I can see. There he is. That's his face. That's your big man, Daddy Taffer. Now, like I said, he's not a public figure. He's not a, uh, a streamer. He's not public about his face. He's not a big Twitter personality. Matter of fact, after he uh, after Scully deleted her Twitter account, he was soon to follow. He's not internet peoples, is what I'm trying to say. You did it. <laughs> 
bitch, you did it. Now here's Leslie laughing at this. Notice that Leslie does not condemn this action. She does not show any sign of disapproval of this action. Matter of fact, you can hear her audibly laugh at this action, meaning that she does not, she's not disavowing Scully right now. Now later on, when I called this out on Twitter, she would go on to disavow Scully and pretend like she was not sitting in the same call laughing at this situation. But pay attention there that she saw this happen with her own eyes, her own ears, and she did not make any effort to disassociate herself from what Scully was doing. I think that's an important detail. <laughs> He's gonna kill you. He's gonna kill you. Why would he kill her? Maybe because he's angry. Maybe because he's upset. You're you're legitimately gonna get murdered in your sleep. I mean, I'm not worried about it. He can't come to the US, so we're fine. That requires a lot of paperwork. That requires a lot of paperwork. I almost let that one pass, but then I remember that. I actually remember that she she unironically said it. She he's not gonna do anything to me. That would require paperwork. Oh, I uh, I showed a picture of my ex, the one that was pretty much keeping me from. And here's her saying her action words. I showed a picture of my ex. X. That sucks for him. That sucks for him. Yeah, I can imagine. That that probably does suck for him. So the reason why I'm showing you uh, these DMs with Scully here is that she basically said, I will give you a hint. That wasn't Taffer. Basically, I called her out for the suite. I basically was like, uh, what the hell are you doing? You just doxed your boyfriend out of spite. And her big bang res uh, big brained response that is, is uh, to say basically, uh, that, that, that wasn't Taffer. Joke's on you. I was only pretending to be retarded. I was only pretending to dox my ex-boyfriend so that, you know, an idiot like you would take it and run with it on Twitter. Well, spoiler alert, she admitted to it on her Twitter and then she deleted the tweet. She apologized because literally nobody saw through her lies. I didn't see through her lies. She tried to tell me that publicly on Twitter and I was like, you honestly expect me to believe that? You really expect me to believe it was just a prank, bro? That's your excuse. I didn't believe it and sure enough, uh, I believe it was like 10, 20, 30 minutes later, she apologized on Twitter and then she pulled her apology. After I pointed out, after I leaked her DM to her in a public tweet and I said, so you pretended it wasn't Taffer that you face doxxed. You pretended it was a picture of someone else to try to devalidate my uh, my call out. And then 30 minutes later, you come out and admit I was right. That was Taffer. Not that, you know, she even had to uh, admit that it was Taffer. She said it in the clip. And I don't think anybody was going to buy. Ha <laughs> ha. That wasn't Taffer. She admitted to it. And then she admitted to it again after I called her out on her bullshit. And she admitted to committing a dox. Now, some people argued about the definition of a dox. So I'll go ahead and read you the definition if you're still this hung up over, over the word. It's a very simple word. I don't know why so many people get caught up on this. Dox. Search for and publish a private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. Search for. She had to search for the file on her computer that was Taffer's face. She published it on her Twitter feed. Uh, sorry, on her on her live stream, on her YouTube stream. Identifying information. Well, I think a, a picture of a face is pretty identifying about a particular individual. Taffer is that particular individual on the internet. It was most certainly done on the internet and it was done with malicious intent because remember what she said, he's going to kill me. So she did that and I called her out on it and I was like, well, there you go. If you had any doubt on why I dislike Scully after she disassociated with everyone because she tried to chase some Twitch dick and then she came back and she face doxed her ex-boyfriend. I've shown you that she's uh, a low life. She's, you know, about as low as they come. Everyone around her is discardable and she will go as far as to show private information about you to make herself feel good. So I pointed that out and I said, that's why I don't like Scully. I will never like Scully. I hate her and I never want her to be on the internet again because she's human garbage. So that happened and I thought, well, case closed. You know, I'll still laugh at Scully. I'll still make fun of her and stuff. But I mean, as far as me trying to kind of catch her on something, I've already done that. It's, it's game over. There's no way she can win at this point. Fast forward to tonight. After I ended my show, I was just sitting there eating some uh, some tacos. I, I look at my Twitter feed and I see uh, audio of Scully and Leslie in a call as well as a member named, uh, formerly named Two Grave, now known as formerly uh, formerly known. His old name is Two Grave. Jay, I believe he goes by. But uh, we'll, we'll kind of put him on the side. He's not really relevant to this situation. I mean, he was part of the call, so he should be called out for being a bystander. But this is mainly focused on Scully and Leslie, who are both doc recorded in a call, trying to gather a phone number for a guy who runs a meme Twitter account named Commentary Watchdog, an account that solely existed to piss people off. We're going to show that uh, that audio right now that was leaked tonight of them trying to find this guy's phone number. Why? Because they're nuts. And we're pretty sure it's Crispy and Merlo that are doing it. 
because the like we're pretty sure it's it's Merlo's not in charge of the tweet. He supplied the phone number. Um, and then it's Chris B doing the tweets. Let me double check the Big Brother chat from mine. Now here they're trying to identify which Twitter users behind the account, which I don't have an issue with. You can speculate and try to figure out using a little deductive uh, reasoning to try to find who runs the account. I don't have an issue with that. But when you start going after personal information like a phone number, well, then we have an issue here. Yeah, we need to know 100% for sure. We need to know 100% for sure. Now that was Leslie speaking. Why do you need to know 100%? It's a meme Twitter account. I mean, it's doing no harm. There's nothing wrong with this account existing. It's not going to change any of your lives. This account is not here to expose you for some crime or is it why are you getting so defensive over a meme account the whole joke behind the account is that it catches commentators on uh their shortcomings why are you getting so defensive over a meme account are you worried they're gonna find some heinous act that you may or may not have done in the past i'm starting to wonder now kind of makes you think starts to activate those almonds you know what i mean now Unfortunately, we don't have to, uh, well, I guess you can speculate on what they were trying to hide, what kind of bodies they were hiding or whatever, but we got audio of them trying to find a phone number for a meme Twitter. So whatever heinous act they may have done that they're trying to make sure this account doesn't come and expose. Let me just, uh, let me just play the clip right here. I think I made my point. Bitch follows both of these accounts. Can we be real? One time the day that freaking Tazir, uh, was being harassed by this account, I did do the forgot password thing once on him to try and get, see the last two digits of this phone number to try to see the last two digits of his phone number so basically what they were doing is a little uh password manipulation they would type the account in to the username bar they go to type a password in and as they would type the password in uh they would get the password wrong multiple times obviously because they wouldn't know the password ideally and this would prompt twitter to uh sort of ask for uh you know it would send a text to the phone number and in doing that they would be able to find the last two digits of the user's phone number and by doing this to everyone who they think might run the account if they compare the last two digits of each phone number they'll be able to figure out who runs the account what the fuck like if you like did the forgot password thing he might have gotten not fully though i only got to the point where it gave you the info where it gave you like the hint and then uh i screenshot that and sent it to taz here and then her and but, i were talking but you but he still might have gotten a notification no it won't give you a notification until you actually go to the next step trust me i know trust me i know i'm sure you do scully you know a lot about this finding people's uh partial phone numbers to try to find out who runs a meme account that's making fun of you. Are you starting to wonder why they're making fun of you so hard? Because you spurgs wouldn't leave them alone? Because you spurgs were, were freaking out at every single mention? Like, what were you trying to hide? It was a dumb meme account with a hundred followers. What were they going to find that is some heinous act that you had done? Ideally, you'd done nothing, right? Why are you so desperate to figure out who runs the account that you'll go as far as to manipulate the uh, Twitter to figure out the last two digits of everyone's phone number? I tested it on my mom's Twitter account. Do you think maybe it's Smacks? Because, I mean, he is like a, a dumb little edgy 14-year-old. <laughs> Do you think it's smacked a dumb little edgy 14-year-old? I wouldn't put it past him. It's his phone number. That okay. came back for password recovery for his account and for the watch dog. Is there a way have it attached to a phone number? You can have, you can't have it attached to a phone number without being able to verify the phone number. How many there, I, so far, I think there are three people that I know of, I believe, are attached to this account. No, because here's the thing is that the, the tweets seem to be like crispy, but then abhorrent has obvious by crispy, and then the phone number seems like it belongs to Mitch. So they're comparing numbers right there to try to find who runs this account. Now, there was some questioning as to whether some flagging was going on. Apparently, there was. Now, this tweet is deleted right now, but Scully was kind enough to archive it in an old group chat we were in. Because remember, Scully was used to be a, a semi, a sort of a pseudo co-host on this show. So obviously, she would hang around group chats where I happened to be in them. And what she failed to realize was that if I ever found out this information, not only would I bury Keemstar or bury Alex, I was going to bury you. I'm not going to stand behind this. So here she is documenting her laughing at the account getting restricted. Do you think she had any uh, part in flagging the account? Do you think maybe that happened? I don't know. I'm just speculating. Like I said, the almonds uh, are activated. Now, Leslie was also in this group chat. This was when I was first getting to know Leslie. And uh, my oh my, what a first impression I was given. So Leslie comes into our group chat, by the way, and she says, well, Watchdog has been exposed as crispy, and that's all I have for you guys. See ya. Then she left the group chat. This is all on May 8th, by the way. I said, the fuck? Nick says, uh, I'm going to come out and support Internet Watchdog. Everyone's so emotional. And while I think he's a pussy for not showing his face, 
It's just getting to the point of satire. I said, uh, I still have no idea what he does. Nick says, trigger people. I said, or like what this whole thing is about. Nick says, that's it. At Scully, seriously, no disrespect, but it's out of hand from everyone. I said, I've given like two seconds of thought on the internet watchdog. I have no clue. Nick says, he's an asshole taking shots at the commentary community, but everyone's freaking out. I said, oh, well, I will support him then. Commentary community is ass. You can see me and Nick, we don't care at all. We actually support this as I come uh, an account that exists solely to rile up the community. Sounds like a great idea. Scully says, I'm not even running that commentary live Twitter uh, right now. That is bunny. I stopped talking about it. Uh, Nick says, look, I'm not going to talk shit about your friend when she just left and isn't here to defend herself, even when I've been drinking, but I hope she doesn't make content talking smack about others. It's not her thing and she's super offended. That's fine, but she can't be criticizing people then freaking out when she gets shit talked. Lastly, I I hope no one is actively doxing. I hope nobody is actively doxing him or her. I have made a harsh stance on the subject and I find out that uh, the, uh, that that's something that's going on. I'm a half to disavow. Oh, it's too good to be true. It's like we were open to the idea that if there is doxing going on, we'll disavow and look what happened. So I said, yeah, I agree. Even I was, even I, I had no clue what the watchdog even was. I literally don't know what this account is. I just see these people freaking out about it. And and I'm just like, what are you? This is a massive reaction. What are you doing? I don't understand. Why are we freaking out? What are we talking about? Identify who cares who runs this account? It doesn't matter. What difference does it make? Just do your th mind your business. Scully wrote, I totally understand. She's kind of an, in an emotional state right now. And the name Miss Trip said that she was trying to grab their IP and shoot. So she took a direct offense and that's become a huge problem of it. Well, I don't know about the IP. I wouldn't be surprised, but I will say for now, I don't know about the IP thing going on there. However, when it came to uh, grabbing their IP, she decided to do something worse. She wanted to identify uh, phone numbers to compare them. It may be the last digit. I'm sure that's going to be the crutch. That's what they're going to crutch to. It was only the last two digits. Uh, it was only the last two digits. doesn't matter. The fact that you still tried to find two digits at all, let alone the rest of them, that's the problem here. You went to this extent to try to identify who ran a 100 follower meme account. Who would do this other than psychopaths? It doesn't matter. Last two is enough. So if that's really the crutch, that they're going by. What a position to even be in in the first place. It was only two digits, dog. You don't understand. Oh, sorry. Only two digits. My bad. I don't care if it's one digit. I don't care if it's like the middle digit, like the, the digit that's in like the middle of the whole like nine numbers or something. It doesn't matter. Why are you going to this extent at all? I know who it is. It's RD Sapio. Well, I thought you guys figured out it was, it was, uh, it was crispy. Although to be fair, these DMs are from three days later. So at first they think it's RD Sapio. Then they think it's crispy. I guess trying to use deductive reasoning didn't quite work out. So they had to just full on dox to sort of, uh, narrow down their options there. If Bunny is going to participate in this thread, she should unblock instead of hiding so sad can't uh he can't shut shit to bunny okay they're just talking shit here okay pedophile all right we sort of have an issue with uh people falsely accused of pedophile but that's irrelevant to the story here anyway i'm looking at the screenshot right now i don't think there's anything worth calling out here but said did he get terminated i can't find his real account on twitter scully says he privated nick says either way it's not a big deal scully says but that kid hates furries not sure what that has to do with it but maybe i'm missing something here nick says it's a nobody talking shit on the internet even boblax agrees like and that's exactly the point we're talking about a nobody here. Just some random guy talking a little shit. Who cares? Why are we going to this extent, this level of urgency to identify? We gotta find out who this guy is. It's it's irrational. This is an irrational response that only, I don't know, a crazy person would make. Just throwing that out there. Nicholas says, it's a nobody talking shit on the internet. And Scully replies, and me and Bunny. They're talking shit about me and Bunny. Me and Leslie. So we gotta do something about this. Well, what we didn't know at the time was there was a little a little doxery going on there. Not good. Nick said, he is only as powerful as you make him. We're all sitting here trying to make t talk some sense into her. She and Leslie are spurging out. Boblax says, who cares? Nick says, who cares? I said, I don't even know who the guy is. Do you know how much thought I put into the commentary watchdog? Not enough to even know who he was. Apparently from these screenshots, I was even clueless. I was like, who, who are we talking about again? Commentary watchdog? Who, who is this guy? I don't, I don't know who this guy is. You know why? Because he's irrelevant. He doesn't matter. Nick's like, he's just some guy talking shit. Oh, good. We need more of that. Scully replies, true. Well, talking sense to Scully didn't uh, work long term there. So fast forward to right now. Scully and Leslie were both sitting on a call trying to identify phone numbers to compare them to figure out who ran the account, who had similar phone numbers to the account. That's damning right there. That is very damning, especially when you re remember, that's not her first instance of doxing. She face doxed her ex-boyfriend. Now, apparently, she tried to find the number. The point I'm trying to make is that Scully has a now history of doing this, whether it be releasing someone's face, identifying someone's phone number. She does not care about personal information, which I find hilarious. 
hilarious coming from a person who put up this video right here. Why doxing isn't okay. You couldn't make this up if you tried. You literally couldn't write this down. It writes itself. Do we want to take a look at this? Put a one in the chat. If you want to just take a look at this and see what she has to say about doxing. See what hot takes she wants to give about her opinions on doxing. I, I can't imagine she's uh, breaking grounds here. That's a lot of ones. How many people do we even have watching this? Oh, 180 people. 180 people tuned in to watch Scully make a fool out of herself. That is beautiful right there. Let's uh, let, let's go ahead and get into this right now. So doxing, that's what that's what we're gonna talk about today. And anybody who follows me on Twitter should know why. Uh, a few days ago, uh, some ass hat. So Saturday, Saturday, I posted a video that was very divisive. We can say, posted a day early because of the fact that I knew that the Keemstar interview was coming out and I wanted to get ahead, not just because I I wanted to, but because I knew that whatever I had recorded with Just Destiny was going to have more content than what Keemstar was going to do because Keemstar likes to attack and bully. That being said- Attack and bully. Of all the terrible things Keemstar has done, not attacking and bullying. Oh God, the whore. You know what else Keemstar has done? Participate in doxing. Also what you've done. Uh I just pointed out some similarities here. I think you and Keemstar would get along. I don't know why you're taking shots at him. You and him would get right along in a Discord call trying to find people's personal information, see if they're actually pedophiles or not. Hey, someone called your friend Leslie a pedophile. The commentary watchdog called her a pe pedophile, to my knowledge. Maybe you should dox uh, Leslie, figure out if that's true or not. On Saturday afternoon, someone decided- Uh-oh, did someone take the video down? Did someone really take the video down at 44 seconds? Oh, the video is private. What a coincidence. It's a good thing I had that downloaded. Oh, what a shame. This is how predictable you are, Scully, because I know you're watching. I, I, I knew you- I literally knew this was going to happen. <laughs> So I downloaded it. So let's just go back to the stamp that we're at and uh, let's get right back into this. On Saturday afternoon, someone decided that it'd be fun to post my last name on Twitter. A last name on Twitter. Now, I don't know what her last name is and I'm not about to find out because I'm not, believe it or not, I'm not interested in finding your personal information. I, I can't think of a scenario where I would be. Maybe there is, I don't know. But off the top of my head, I can't think of why I would want your personal information. But I'm gonna go out and guess, maybe your last name isn't that common. Maybe it's a little, uh, you know, less used, so to speak. Even still, I think phone numbers and faces are far more e easily able to identify someone than your last name. Now, she claims that based on her last name, anyone can find her, which if that's true, that's terrible. But it's kind of ironic looking at the situation now, given what she's done, what she's willing to do, you know, it's kind of funny to watch this back and just see what her opinion is at the time versus how she feels it should be done to other people. I've never posted my last name publicly on Twitter before. No, I've never posted anyone's last name. I just posted other people's uh, faces that are private figures. Nor will I ever. Oh, <laughs> believe me, I wouldn't doubt it for a minute you would. My personal information was leaked because somebody wanted attention. This person hacked into another, u no, I use hacked loosely. What they- God, she's talentless. She can't even do a video right. They did was they manipulated a child into getting that person's username and password on Twitter. Once that happened, they locked the kid out of his Twitter account and then started Look, to- Look at you, I Twitter account. Ah. I'm bored out of my mind watching this. It's just funny to kind of look back. You know what? Maybe I'll re-upload. I, I, I might toss this up tomorrow, actually. Why not? I'll toss the full arcade up tomorrow because I'm actually getting boring. I'm actually getting bored of this. Can we raise the speed on this? I'm on Windows Movie Maker right now because, yeah, obviously, oh, we can't really watch it on uh, on YouTube. But I will say this. Now that she's taking the video off, does that mean she doesn't stand by her words anymore? Does that mean she thinks doxing is okay but, uh, at this point? Because her actions show that. So does the removal of her opinion on the subject now say that she's okay with it? Her actions would suggest that. Her takedown of her own statement would say that. This should be very telling for you in the chat right now. Why did she take this down while I was watching it live? <laughs> 